welcome to it's too warm to breathe but it's also so much wind that's too cold to do summer <laughs> yeah that's where we live hello beautiful bookworms my name is katarina and welcome to my channel and today i'm going to be doing my june wrap-up and i'm actually very pleased with the amount and the books in general that I've read this month. I'm very very happy that I was able to read all of these books. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's hope that this has a little bit of a happier tone than my last wrap-ups. We shall see. So the first thing that I want to talk about really quickly and the only ebook that I ended up reading um, in June was South of Heaven by Erin Lewis and this was kindly sent to me by Elbound Books, the publisher of this book. Um, I enjoy this book. How should I say this? It's not... I have a problem with comedy. I was kind of expecting this to be a little more serious in a way. However, I did really enjoy the social criticism that was painted in the book. So this book is about Kat, our main character, and she is a stripper, a lap dancer, pole dancer, stripper, uh, and she's working to pay for her education and to pay for her house and everything. And one day she is going full speed ahead with her cat in the car and there's a car accident and both her and her cat die. Uh, and she reaches heaven, which is something that she never thought she would because she remembers to pray to God and ask for absolution. Um, and she does reach heaven and in heaven St. Peter is like, the fuck you doing here? And she's like, I don't fucking know. And he allows her to get in because she uh, praised God and asked for absolution of all of her sins before dying. And so she's like, cool, heaven must be nice. I mean, I'm gorgeous. I, you know, have these beautiful robes and my house is everything that I've ever wanted until stuff starts to stink. First of all, her cat is nowhere to be seen and everybody says like dogs are the only creatures that go to heaven, cats are probably in hell, so her cat is probably in hell, fuck it. And she gets a little bit worried, you know, I, I want my cat. Uh, second of all, uh, the angels are dicks literally, figuratively, not literally, sorry, because they're so mean to her just because she was a stripper. They call her Cat the Whore and they're very, you know, disagreeable with her. And Jesus and God themselves are not what they are supposed to be. Uh, so I do understand that this is kind of a social criticism on uh, Catholicism, the presentation of God and how Praising God is like the only thing that is going to get you out of something bad when in reality being yourself uh, is punishable. Uh, I understand this. I enjoyed it. I think it was fun. However, comedic books are not exactly my thing and so I couldn't rate it way, way higher just because, you know, it was a fun time but it wasn't... I wasn't gripped enough. I, I read it and it was cool to get my mind off the things that I was doing and I really enjoy the prose and I think the cat is a nice character and I like to see how things played out and I laugh a few times with the concept of all of that heaven where people are really mean people and they pretend to be nice people like a little bit like society, you know? Um, but it, it, it was, I mean, if you like something that is comedic and if you don't mind having uh, your religious views challenged to a point, I think it's going to be very interesting if you pick this one up. If you don't really like these types of things, either religion or comedy, then I suggest that it's not the book for you. I did enjoy it, however. Then I have read the fifth... Yeah, the fifth uh, book in the Sebastian Graham series. Um, which I believe is translated to The Punishment of the Ignorance, or The Punishment for Ignorance? Ignorance Punishment? I'm not really sure because this is directly translated from the Nordic version, and so I'm just freely translating the title in Portuguese. This was my favorite book of the entirety of the series. The series in itself is good. 
even though I'm here to tell you that the third book is not that incredible, but it's cool. But this book, this book was great. I really loved all of the characters developing and all of the things that were going on between all of them. And also, the criminal in here was so interesting. It reminded me a lot of a good episode of Criminal Minds. And I was just trying to guess who the fuck this person was before they actually served to you on a silver platter who it is. And I really, I really enjoyed it. So the premise of this is that basically Sebastian Bergman and his team have to find out this person that is assassinating celebrities. Um, and the way that he does it he, is he presents them with uh, general cultural questions um, and they have to answer a certain percent of the questions to pass. If they are not able to pass, they will be killed uh, with um, a gun. And uh, celebrities don't pass, so it's of course a comment on uh, the programs that we have nowadays in TV, those reality shows that don't really educate us and don't serve any purpose, uh, rather than just sitting there and, well, look at that, there's naked people making out or making challenges or whatever. And I understand this, I sometimes get furious with some of these programs, but at the same time I do understand that what they're trying to do is take you away from daily life. And there was here a discussion on how can we say that having a really big generalized culture is better than having a practical sense of how to move and live in daily life at the moment. Um, of course that I agree that people should educate themselves and know things that might be useful to them, but I can see the discussion that is made in here. I am also fairly, fairly happy, happy? <laughs> Not really happy. If you read this, you know why, but I really like the ending of this book. A lot, a lot, a lot. Then I've read the third volume of Shadow House by Samato. I'm really enjoying this. I think I like this better than the first two. Things are developing, challenges are being made, creepy things are starting to happen. And I want to see how our main character and friends get out of this one, because this one is interesting. Um, it, it was fairly fun, it is fairly short, so it was good to read when I really had a lot of work to do. And I'm liking these series, so I will keep on going with them until, you know, either ends or I don't like it anymore. But I think it's pretty fun when you don't have a lot of time and if you're getting into manga and like those little little mystery vibes with cute main characters, I think this one could be for you. I've also read two more mangas, which I have a review for, and I'm going to leave a link up above, and that is Chojin X Volume 1 and Chojin X Volume 2 by Sui Hishida, also known as the creator of Tokyo Ghoul, one of my favorite series. Um, Chojin X, yeah, I read these two, and they are very, very big, and the content in them is not what I was expecting. I was a little bit disappointed, however, I want to keep on going with Volume 3 to see if I really like the series or if it's not one for me. I think the development of themes and character in here is completely different from Tokyo Ghoul, and I shouldn't be comparing, but you know, when you know other works from the author, you cannot help it to compare it, and I don't think this idea is very well met, but we shall see with the third volume, I guess. I will leave a link up above everything that I think about this series if you want to go check it out to know more about what I think. I have also read, shock, a non-fiction book this month, and that was Uma Valsa com a Morte, ou Pouco Que Sei Sobre Música, Literatura, Melancolia, Espiritualidade e a Minha Avó. And this can be fairly translated to A Dance with Death, or the little that I know about music, literature, melancholia, spirituality, and my grandma. And this is by João Torto. He is a Portuguese author. This was actually the first book that I got to read by him. I have another one, but my mom is reading it currently. And I just want to tell you that, if you don't know, this author is translated in a lot of languages, so I would advise you to search for his books. I really enjoyed the things that were here written. I got an idea that he is indeed a very, very dark person in, in the inside. 
uh, on the inside. Quite a little bit as me, actually. So it was really fun to see him tackle actually day-to-day -day, um, things and his thoughts and how this all had to do with the fact that we as human beings are slowly but surely venturing into our deaths. I think it was incredible. I really love the thematic of his grandma because I'm fairly uh, close to my grandma and my grandfather and so for me having him talk about his grandmother's uh, dementia I think it was it was it was very close to home um, and the thematics of it were pretty cool the comparison between literature and writing and actually composing or performing music and everything uh, he had a lot of great things to say I actually shock dog-eared a bit of this book um, because I'm pretty sure that I want to keep it and it's an non-fiction so it's something that I would like to go and revisit his thoughts on it there are thoughts of him that I don't agree with but we are two different people and so that's perfectly normal and I don't think that that would deter me from actually enjoying the way that he writes so very excited to tackle his fiction because I really like this one then I read A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. I read this for my book club, uh, not mine actually, but a book club that um, horror readers are doing online um, that is made by Fabrica Tor or Horror Factory here in Portugal. Um, and this was our book for June. It was my first time reading A Clockwork Orange and I am speechless. I tried to actually film a review of this book, but all that I could say is like, this is so fucking important, you should read this. This has nothing to do with glamorizing violence, this has everything to do with free will, with good versus bad, with choices, with society, and with actual real things that are kind of happening now everywhere in the world. And this was written in 63, I think, so very, a very, very actual book. However, I decided that I'm going to watch the film first, since I've also never done that, and then maybe do a book versus movie adaptation. If you guys would like that, tell me in the comments down below. But yeah, this, this book is priceless. I was so happy that I have an edition of it. It's obviously in Portuguese, since I thought it would be a little bit difficult to me to get uh, the language that Anthony Burgess invented right in English. And so I tried it in Portuguese and it kind of worked. I didn't need to use the glossary pretty much. I just got right into it. And it's so amazing the way that he describes our main character, Alex, and everything that happens to him. And I'm not going to summarize this because every fucking one of you knows what the clockwork, clockwork orange is. Um, but yeah, it was, it was such a great experience. I loved it so much. My only regret is that somehow I fucked up this cover. If you can see it there, it's scratched for some reason. And I don't know why, because I really like it. It's orange. Yeah, but I really enjoyed it. And then finally, I also have a vlog slash review style video for these, but I read the three first books in the Price Manor series. I reread the first two, which I had read in a previous version, and now I read it in um, the newly edited version, and I read for the first time the third one of it. So this is published by Deadline Horror Collective, which is a group of horror indie authors that just joined together and said, we are going to do a series, and each of us is going to do a book, and it's going to be about the same haunted manner, but shit is gonna go differently, and it's going to be in different times, in different places, and with different characters. And it fucking works. I'm going to leave a link up above uh, my video about it. It has almost an hour, but I mean, I talk about three books and my reactions to them, so I think it's not that bad. <laughs> You can just watch it progressively, like see first book one and then book two and then book three if you want. But, so I read The House That Burns by Mike Salt, which is a great beginning and I absolutely love it. It's just such your typical, you know, six people go in a house. Will somebody get out alive? And all of the shit that happens and how you love the characters and you don't want anything bad to happen and how you start to discover how this manner works and if they can kill it or if they can run away and if they can survive and it's just so cool 
Then I read The House That Bleeds by Jamie Stewart, uh, another great one. This was a little bit of a more slower one, a little bit of psychological horror, but also a lot of creature horror. It was pretty fun. Um, it has actually a female-female um, pairing, which is pretty cool, and it tackles a lot of uh, different things. It is set in Russia, but it's not a main part of this book, so I would not let that influence your reading of this. It was written actually before all of this started to happen with Russia and Ukraine. Um, and also it kind of is a revenge story, kind of not, you can decide. And then we have book three, The House That Remains by Michael R. Goodwin. I really loved this ending as well. And this is basically set on a post-apocalyptic world. After COVID, there was another plague, kind of a leprosy kind of thing that you couldn't vaccinate anyone and people died. Um, and so it's the house hasn't fed on anyone for a while and six people in the midst of the post-apocalyptic kind of street where nobody gets there and there's nothing there, they just enter the house to protect themselves from cannibals. <laughs> and shit gets real in the manner. I really love the ending of this as well. So yeah guys, that's all that I've read in June. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you like it, leave a like or subscribe and tell me down below if you're thinking of reading any of these books or if you've read any of these books and maybe advices for great books for me to read. That's going to be all for today and happy readings to you all. Bye!